I think there's always more to learn, put it that way. I'm still learning. And you guys, I'm sure there's a lot, lot more you can learn to make it more enjoyable. Episode 166. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and this week we're sharing with you one of the workshops held by Business of Architecture with a very special guest, Vectorworks maestro, Jonathan Reeves. Now, Jonathan Reeves, um, if you don't know him and you're a Vectorworks user, you are missing out, go and check him out on YouTube and go and explore his website because he's got some of the most fantastic resources available for Vectorworks uh, training. And he very kindly came in and um, sat with a number of our clients here at Business of Architecture and gave us a bit of a masterclass in how Vectorworks can be really utilized to its fullest potential. So Jonathan himself is an award-winning architect, author, and educator. He's the owner and director of Jonathan Reeves Architects. Um, He's got offices in Loughborough in Leicestershire and previously North Devon, um, working both nationally and internationally. He also runs Jonathan Reeves Architects Vectorworks, or JRA Vectorworks, an authorized partner of Vectorworks and UK reseller of Vectorworks software. And he is the author of Revolutionize Your Rendering, which you can check out the details of that in the information here. It's a great, fantastic book. Um, This workshop covers the effective and efficient use of Vectorworks to maximize productivity, best practices for creating CAD libraries and workflows, and how to get your staff up to speed um, and develop good drafting habits and much, much more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Jonathan Reeves. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, a leading business consultancy for architects and design professionals. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Excellent. And today we've got a very special guest. We've got Jonathan Reeves here, who is a Vectorworks maestro. You've been, how long have you been using Vectorworks for, Jonathan? Well, we were just having a little competition, weren't we? Um, I've been using it since I did my final year master's degree at Sheffield University back in 1991, which rapidly dates me and ages me quite a bit, but that's quite a while ago when I think of it. So yeah, it's about, uh, yeah, <laughs> shocking, isn't it, to think how many years ago. Brilliant, brilliant. Early adopter. Excellent. Be- and, believe it or not, Ryan, before that, I, I can honestly say to you, um, I don't think I'd used a computer apart from computer gaming as a kid, you know, which I was a bit fanatical about. Uh, through my first degree university course, I didn't really use computers. They weren't really commonly available then. Yeah. And in a way, that that was what got me started, that master's in architecture and computing. Um, there we go, Minicad. Amazing. And you also run your own architectural practice up in Loughborough? Yes, yes. Jonathan Reeves Architects. Um, architecture Architects, one of those two. I'm not sure, never quite sure which it is. Um, we're a small practice, but um, yes, we do some architectural projects. Um, I also do a bit of consultancy work, I would say, with many of my clients, a bit like yourself, mm-hmm. yeah. um, helping them out with expertise on bigger projects, which is nice, actually, because I get to work on really exciting sort of bigger scale projects that as a small practitioner, you wouldn't probably get, you know. Excellent. Great. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you go onto YouTube and type in Jonathan Reeves and subscribe to Jonathan's <laughs> channel because it's the best resource for Vectorworks out there. Um, oh, thank you. I've, I've, I've been using Jonathan's stuff. <laughs> I've had many a late evening with, uh, with Jonathan in my ear. Watching, watching, his, watching, his, watching his videos, figuring out how to use different aspects of Vectorworks. And as we've been talking here in at Business of Architecture, having those kind of CAD systems and trainings in your, in your business is like, it's so imperative. And it's really interesting when we kind of start talking with everybody about how, what the, the sort of divergence of how people are using Vectorworks and how many sort of, you know, wonderful features there are of the platform that aren't actually being utilized um, by by us in our practices so we end up kind of we end up kind of developing quite convoluted workflows mm. if you like not realizing that Vectorworks can create a whole load of 
a whole lot of shortcuts. So just just have a, a raise of hands. Is sure. everybody everybody here a Vectorworks user? Who's not? Ben's not, not a Vector Vector. Eric, you in a bit. Eric's a bit. <laughs> Eric, Eric, are you a are you a you're a straddler? You're on mute. There we go. Uh, by the first of the year, I'm switching over completely. So okay. I, I have had the subscription all year this year, but I haven't spent the time to. What are you switching from, Eric? Revit. Okay. Yeah, Revit and SketchUp. Mainly I might, Revit. I might come back and ask you a bit more about that a bit later, but um, it's interesting. We have a lot of customers who are doing similar things. So that works. It's in a good, a good sort of place at the moment, I think, for sure. Yeah, just committing to year one. Yeah, doing it hundred percent. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to make the switch. Um, it's easy to keep doing what you've always always done and get the similar results, uh, even though you know possibly that it's not the best or most efficient way of doing things. And um, I think whatever software you use, it's really important to to make the most of. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Back to us. Is what we're going to talk about today. So we'll see how we go. Excellent. Good. And and Ben, you're looking at switching over or you're a CAD connoisseur? <laughs> I am not a CAD connoisseur. <clears throat> um, I'm, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, you know, as I launch a new practice. Yeah. You know, do I go, what platform do I want to use? And I see all kinds of pluses and minuses and I just figured I'd, I'd drop in here and witness and Excellent. see see how it lands. Fantastic, Ben. I'd love to love to hear your view at the end of the session. What what your thoughts are? Um, I think um, a lot of people when they start practices, clearly this is a big decision for them, isn't it? You know, it's, it's a major yeah. one actually. As much as where the office is, it's what are you actually going to do your design, drawing, and documentation on, and how you how you going to do it? But the platform yeah. is very important for sure. But uh, I can give a bit of advice on that when we need to. <laughs> cool. Great. Great stuff. And um, who's been using Vectorworks for more than a decade? Just show of hands. Excellent. Okay. Great. So okay. Good, good experience well, users, definitely. Well, let's, let's, let's jump into it and, and start off, Jonathan, with perhaps just outlining some of the inefficiencies and ineffective things that you see lots of architecture practices with their use of Vectorworks, the kind of common mistakes that you see people not, you know, things people are not taking advantage of, for example. Sure. Thanks, Rion. Yeah, so um, as well as my architectural practice, um, I've always been um, a very keen sort of architectural teacher and educator, and Vectorworks has been my absolute sort of main program. I've taught other bits of software actually during, during my time, Atlantis and SketchUp and a few other things. But, you know, Vectorworks has been my absolute passion throughout. Um, so I've been very fortunate over the years since I've been doing this since 2000 when I set my business up to, in my view, work with some of the best and nicest, brightest practices all over the world, but mainly UK based perhaps until the last couple of years with technology allowing me to be a bit more global. So yeah, I've worked with some fantastic practice, including Paul, Paul's there. Um, and I guess I'm always in admiration of the architecture and the quality of the architecture that these, these practices produce, absolutely. Um, but at the same time, you know, I do feel like um, when you scratch below the surface of, of how the average architectural practice is, is run, I'm sure some of you will relate to this, you know, there's inefficiencies in the way their business is developing. And, and for me, like the main focus of the business, from my point of view, is the CAD side, the CAD 3D, the BIM, the working practices of the drawing, the documentation and presentation. Um, Personally, I think that has got to be the most important thing, you know, and because that is what enables you to do great work and make a profit and please your clients and actually also enjoy the job. Let's face it, that's why we came into this uh, profession to enjoy designing and developing projects and helping our clients. So I do, I do feel that um, it's really important to um, be as good as you can be at the cat side, Rion. 
So, yeah, yeah, that didn't really talk about what the issues are, but that that's the motivation, I guess. So, come Got back and talk about the Got issues it. in a second. Got but it. would any would anybody relate to that? Would you say? A few nods. Good. Well, you know, so when I get engaged to work with practices, um, I think these these are the sort of headline features that I would I would say, depending on the size of them. You know, I work with practices from one person up lots of one person man bands actually, up to my biggest is probably about 120, so quite a big practice, but plenty of mid-sized ones, you know, three, four, five, six, ten, twelve, those sort of sizes. Um so I guess you've got to talk about things like CAD standards and templates, you know, which some people see as a bit boring and a bit restrictive. Um, but in my view, if you develop them right and you develop them in, in, a, in a good way, they free you up, they free up time, they save time, and they develop a nice bit of consistency, which is really essential. As soon as you get more than one person doing a set of drawings, you ideally want those drawings to be consistent. Yeah. And, and is, is this something you, you see in practices where, you know, lots of different people are all drawing in different ways? Yes, I hear this a lot. And this is one big reason people will come to me to, to talk about this. You know, they're all able to use CAD software. We're all clever people. Uh, hopefully us architects can, can draw on the computer fine. And we can draw in lots of different ways with lines, with BIM objects, with 3D objects, all sorts of techniques of drafting. But I would agree with that, that there are consistency issues in terms of the way drawings are produced, both the way they look potentially, mm. but also what's behind the surface is, is, is a bit less visible right. in terms of what layers and classes people use, you know, what graphical standards they might use for elevation, section lines, north points, those sort of fairly straightforward things, you know, yeah. really quite, quite easy to sort, but be surprised about how many practices don't get those basic things mm. as tight as they could i'd say <laughs> let's be polite Let, let's 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 ask the the group here of yeah. some of the some of the issues that you or or some of the things where you think you're not being as effective or inefficient as you could be either in your own you know if you're not using vectorworks or if you are using vectorworks where do you think some of your time sucks are recurring who'd like to just america America and Stephen. So um, we've come to Vectorworks um, and uh, like the program immediately for its user friendliness and intuitive qualities, but we have not adopted 3D at all. Sure. So we really are using it. Like we always joke, we kind of use it like trace paper, you know, yeah. our first floor is layer, our second floor is layer two and so on and so forth. So we are really using it as a drafting program and we know that we haven't even scratched the surface of the efficiencies we could be using. And I think you know, trying to figure out how to take that step is a hard one when you've been drafting in 2D for a couple of decades. It's a big, um, you know, we, we do render in, we, we do renderings and 3D modeling in SketchUp, but we have them kind of as these two separate entities and, and yes. conceptually, you know, they don't, they don't intermingle and, and the efficiencies are staggering, but we've actually started to export from SketchUp into Vectorworks to, to capture sections from 3D models and such. So we feel a little bit like, <laughs> mm. like I'll make that and backwards, I think. Um, Eric, you, know, uh, is it, you, you really hit the nail on the head, as I may say. Um, I hear this almost uh, probably eight out of 10 times when people talk to me about we might need some training. These are the things that they, they know. You know, Vectorworks, as you know, is is best in class for 2D graphics. I think nobody would argue that it's it's just produces beautiful drawings. If you're a good artist, you'll love drawing with Vectorworks, you know, with all the, the line weights and the colors and opacities and graphics and gradients, all these things. And it comes with a great library of 2D stuff. So like 2D wise, it's absolutely unbeatable. And I'm always, I'm always saying to practices, actually, if you're going to do 2D Vectorworks, do it really well. But you don't really need uh, Adobe Photoshop that often, maybe just the final tickle. And you don't really need Adobe InDesign to present. Oh. Um, I really believe that Vectorworks can do the bulk of that work. So it cuts out a lot of other software being integrated. And that's just on the 2D side. Um, so then, you know, we move then 
onto the 3D side. And of course, anybody not doing 3D in vectors will immediately mention the SketchUp word. Um, you know, SketchUp's widely used and everybody has had an experience of it. Some people love it, some people hate it, um, some people tolerate it, and, and it definitely has a, a great place in the architectural history of 3D. I, I would say it's played a huge role. But what I do think with SketchUp, personally, is it can be a bit of a dead end. And I don't mean that in the wrong way, I just mean that you do a set of 2D drawings so that you can then export them to build the 3D model. Okay, may, you may build the 3D model and then do the drawings later, but you're doing both. You're doing both at the same time, juggling both. Whereas clearly in Vectorworks, it's not a huge step. There is a, a jump, but if you can learn to create your drawings from your model, okay, and some people call this BIM or building information modeling, but that for many people is a scary terminology as well. So I, I, would, I would call it just designing efficiently, more than mm -hmm. BIM. Um, you know, if you can work in that way, then you can develop your drawings from your model in one software. Now, how nice would that be as efficiency? So that's the goal, I'd say, of eight out of 10 practices I work with. And I mean, I have been working like that probably 10 or 15 years, 10 years at least. So yeah, it's absolutely achievable. And I'm a very passionate sort of uh, promoter of this, this movement, shall we say. <laughs> Brilliant. And that's a, that's, a, that's a bold claim there that you could do away with InDesign and Photoshop. I wouldn't say do away. I would say replace 80% of the time and 20% of the time. If you're writing a book, for example, like I just did, Rion, or I'll talk about yeah. that later, that you need InDesign. But if you're doing a, a five page or 10 page design report, mm -hmm. you can do it all in Vectorworks, 100%. Wow. Okay. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, you've got your hand up there. What, what sorts of inefficiencies have you experienced in your your CAD life? Uh, automation. Uh, so I oversee a, a, I don't know, 20 plus uh, large shopping centers. Um, and, you know, I, I, I will still have to use CAD 2D stuff on that portion of it. But uh, what really, one of the things that really drew me to it is and the open my eyes was how I could automate, um, you know, a potential Excel sheet and then pull the information into a, a tenant space, which is like a tenant name, um, you know, those types of things. And then automatically have that site plan updated. If it was just, a, if it was a two way uh, yeah. automation between two different things, you know, and then at that point I can, I could even update the Excel sheet automatically, um, you know, based on something that reads in my email. So those are kind of some big, big ticket items that I have to work on and, and learn how to do the automation. But that's a huge time suck for me is, um, you know, going through that. So automation is uh, key for me. Um, I want to try to automate as much as possible. Yes, I mean, that is a good point, um, as well as the design side, which I'm sure we'll talk more about, which is a key motivator for a lot of architects and designers. You know, clearly a lot of, should we say, fairly boring time is spent doing window and door schedules or area schedules or maybe quantity schedules to help get the amount of timber in the building or costings. Vectorworks has always been pretty good for this in that you have this built in, uh, almost like Excel, it's, it's a spreadsheeting system built into Vectorworks and it's very programmable and it's very accomplished. And now there is this direct link with Excel. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's exciting times for people who want to sort of automate um, the more mechanical side of things, definitely. But again, building the 3D model is the key to that, not just doing in 2D, of course. Right. And I, I do all my all my shopping center the the construction documents and stuff in three D, cool. um, and it's it's just the mind shift going from Revit over to in SketchUp just understanding yeah. where because it seems like Vectorworks has so many different functions, um, and you know just trying to find those uh, you know yeah. oh I need to do this how do I do <laughs> this in Vectorworks you know those types of things so yeah yeah. You know what you want to do. It's just finding where to do it and how to do it. That's yeah. it. I think I think a lot of people have that when they transition from one software to another. Thank you. Great, great, Mark. You got your hand up there. 
What sorts yeah, of yeah. inefficiencies so to, do you experience? I have to admit that, that uh, I've been using Vectorworks for 20 years and I too, too I'm using the 3D capability. Of it. I did learn it at the beginning and then decided by using Zing stuff, it was just too slow. SketchUp was far, far more over the time. It was easy to use, so I just sped, sped ahead in that and started importing things thing, exporting to make it work. Now, yeah. if I were to, to relearn the 3D in Vectorworks, would I still have the same um, presentation results in 2D with a 3D model and the same subtlety in the way the, the line weights can change the colors and te textures, et cetera, or not? I would say the honest answer is it will be slightly different, the presentation quality. Um, and I've got some projects in a bit. When, when appropriate, I'll, I'll love to share my screen and show you a couple of projects I've been working on. Um, but in many ways, um, you know, you'll always get a different quality between pure 2D drafting and any 3D rendering. So I think that's to be said with any, any software. But it's not to say that, in my view, it's a worse quality. In some ways, I'd say it was a much better quality. You know, you get all your shadows, you get your depth, you get reflections, maybe. Um, there's different styles of rendering. And I've got a really nice little system that I like and I've developed. You know, and, and the great thing with Vectorworks is I think it's a very flexible software. And what I love about it is you can develop your own styles. And I know many practices that do have very different style to me, but it works for them. So that's that's really key. Develop your own in-house style, not just for normal 2D graphics, but for the way you present things. And, um, you know, Vectorworks does allow you to do that. It's not just like a, a funnel of you've got to present it this way. I like that. Okay, yeah, I think you can get good quality. How, how would you recommend that I get back into Vectorworks 3D process? <clears throat> <laughs> well, give me a call in the new year or before. Get me some, get some training. Um, I mean, okay, there's lots of videos out there online. There's lots of content, of course, these days. There's, we're swamped with it. So, yeah, soak up all the free stuff and, and get going. But, you know, there is nothing quite like a bit of personal training. And, you know, um, I could probably get people from zero to very enthusiastic about that to its 3D within about two hours of training. Okay, and I've heard people say things like, well, we won't be using SketchUp again after that, which is quite a bold claim. So, you know, it's not a lot. And then after that, you can follow up with a bit more to top up. So it, it doesn't take that long to understand the basic concepts. And then, of course, a bit more practice and uh, time spent to perfect. But it's not as big a jump as people think. It used to be much harder. And I think, Mark, maybe when you tried it a few years ago, uh, the software, the hardware maybe was a bit more awkward, a bit slower. It's pretty slick now. It's pretty slick. So I've probably said this for the last three or four years. This is the year to move from 2D to 3D. And I'm always saying it, but I really do believe that this year, particularly with the new Mac Pro M1 hardware, for example, uh, and good graphics cards available for everybody, you know, um, free twin motion for all Vectorworks users. Wow, you know, that is incredible, isn't it? Uh, we'll talk about twin motion more, but free, amazing real-time rendering software for all of you. And clearly some big advances in Vectorworks 2022, things like the new texturing tool, the new push-pull modeling. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great time. It's very exciting actually to, to make that push if you haven't already. It, it's well, quite interesting. Things that slows sorry, me Mark. Down. Sorry, Brian. Go on, go on Mark, go on, Mark. All right, all right. One of the things I've, that, that, that I find a bit of a bane of my life, whenever I'm importing other consultants' on drawings, and maybe yeah. I just don't know what to do, but I end up with, with all their, their classes that I hate, like, I can't get rid of them, and I, mean, I just straight to the head out of them. You have to manage that. Yeah, there's, there's different processes when you're working with consultants. <clears throat> you have to manage that. I won't go into the detail now, but it can be easily managed. Lots yeah. of strategies for doing it, but um, it, it's important to manage it and keep it separate from yours. Otherwise, you just get this clutter and you can't see the wood for the trees, for sure. Yeah. It's quite easy to do. Good, good stuff. Thank you, Mark. Um, just one more, one more person who's got who. Where do you have your inefficiencies or time mm. sucks, Ellis? Yeah, well, um, I think with my cat library, um, I would like to be consistent in um, uh, consistent, yeah, by uh, and putting um, new. Um, uh, objects into it when I when I make something or when I use it, um, and it's very difficult to get a good overview of what is in the cat library. 
So I would like to have a small library of the things that, that, that are the most common to use for me. And I, I feel that that is well, always difficult because you're working on a project and then you go, you know, fast to yep. the, the next project and then you forget all the stuff yes. that you already made. Actually, you know, this goes back to Ron's first point about what do I see in practices that I could do better? And this is a huge thing. After your template and your CAD standards, having an effective and efficient set of office libraries is right up there, critical. Think of, a, think of your library of books with no book. It's like a bookshelf with no books on. You know, you've got to have good books on that shelf uh, that you can pull out. You know exactly which page to look at and grab what you need. So the resource manager in Vectorworks, in my view, is I've tried lots of different software. I mean, we were talking about MicroStation, weren't we, Rian, earlier? Yeah. I used MicroStation. I was at Field and Clegg for years working in MicroStation and you were at Rogers. Um, great software, but... You know, I've never seen anything quite as effective as, as the Vectorworks resource manager for managing libraries. Now, this is definitely something that people don't use as well as they could. So if, you, if you're one of those users who's sort of not quite sure how amazing it is, I'm, you know, going to say to take another look because it's a fantastic area of the software. The key with the resources manager, understand how it works and how to use it. But the most important thing know how to develop your own in-house libraries exactly um, and get them there as favorites. So I'll, 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 when I do my sharing a screen later, I'll demonstrate and show you a few of my libraries, guys, if you like. And I'll show you how to create some libraries. Um, I'm quite passionate about this. I, I do retail a few libraries on my website, if I can plug those, Rion. Absolutely. Um, I've developed them over away. the years. They sell like hotcakes, but you know what? They are fantastic. They save a lot of time. And you can load them all up in your resources. And the best thing about them is you can just tweak them and tailor them towards your own requirement. But what they do do is demonstrate how to create those libraries. So yeah, that, that, you hit another nail on the head. Definitely libraries is, is very important. Great. And can I have a small, well, my, another question again? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a Lumion user. Oh yeah. Uh, I see all the pr promotion uh, now that you did already. Yeah. Uh, about the other program, but um, is there um, a specific reason why I would change my program? <laughs> um, look, Lumion is a, is a wonderful software, and um, it's the renderings that you get from Lumion are, are very, very top notch. You know, really, really admire the rendering quality. Um, I think the main reason is, in my view, is obviously it's quite an expensive investment. Um, and compared to free, it's a big investment. So yeah, Twin Motion is is this year free for Twin for Vectorworks 2022 users. Um, now that is a really compelling reason to upgrade if you haven't already anyway. Let alone mm. the other features of 2022. Um, as you know, I'm a I'm a Vectorworks reseller in the UK, and I'm always talking to my clients about what the benefits are. Yeah, there are a lot of benefits, but that Twin Motion free is is a huge one. So. Epic Games and Vectorworks have this partnership they've developed. And, you know, I think that's, that's excellent. I like to think I played a little role in that occurring. You know, I've, I've been working both sides for a couple of years now. So it's been great, really exciting. So, yeah, Twin Motion is very easy to use, very fast. If you, if you, if you would get a Lumion for free, would, would you make the same decision? Um, personally, I love Twin Motion and it does everything I could ever need it to do. And, um, I love the ease of use of it and the speed, the interface, super simple, super easy. I, I played with Lumion. It is nice, the quality of the renders, but the interface a bit more, a bit more tricky to learn. Um, I, think, I think, look, there's nothing wrong with using both. Twin Motion has some benefits and Lumion probably has some benefits. A bit like Enscape as well, which I also love. And I have a PC that I use Enscape on. And I use that for some projects because that has a few benefits too. Um, so... Every bit of software has its own advantages and disadvantages, but I would honestly say Twin Motion is right up there. It's an incredible bit of software. So yeah, you should definitely get into it. It's um, quite fun and the renderings you can produce are superb. Okay. In fact, Great. this render behind me, this <laughs> is not my real space. As you can see, I'm in the UK, is a rendering <laughs> from Twin Motion. <laughs> Love it. America. I just wanted to ask if you're coming from um, uh, V-Ray for SketchUp, 
is it would it be sort of a reasonably sort of sideways step to to try the twin motion or would the learning curve still be fairly steep no the learning curve for twin motion is light it's quite easy um okay within that ease of use most people can pick it up and play with it within an hour or two and do something amazing um okay then there's the hidden depth okay so to move to those next levels is where either a bit of training required or my wonderful new book that I've just completed about a week ago, which I'll talk about later and, and give you a quick preview of. Yep. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, there is depth there in the software, but the, the good thing is it's very cleverly designed software in that it's super easy to get a grip of at one level, yeah, and do things. And then to take it to that next level, yes, there is a bit more uh, expertise required. But that can come with time and practice and training. I would say... Um, Twin Motion now, uh, there's a new version coming soon. They've already, re already released what they call the 2022 preview, okay? And in that, they have ray tracing or path tracing, they call it. So in that preview, oh, the quality of the renders is just as good as V-Ray, as good as anything, as good as Lumion. But of course, with quality comes the penalty of speed. Now, the beauty with Twin Motion is you get both. You get the speed when you're working, designing, and and visualizing and presenting, you click the path tracer button and boom, it starts to render using the ray tracing. And then, you know, depending on the quality settings, you'll get an amazing rendering out. It will take longer, of course, but yeah, you've got both really. It's good. Great. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, the guys who are with Paradise Theatre, is that Dora and Lance? You're with? Yes. Um, what, what are because um, Paradise Theatre? Then they're not like a kind of traditional architecture firm. They design um, kind of extraordinary home cinemas and home theatres. What are the sorts of uh, blockages or in, 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 inefficiencies that you guys experience with your, some of your CAD delivery on Vectorworks? What, uh, there's probably several. Um, one of which being, uh, we do a lot of work with um, manufacturers of different equipment, like audio equipment and stuff like that. And we try to pull that into our 3D libraries. And I'm always so excited to see an SKP file because they import so nicely into Vectorworks. They do. But then I turn it into a symbol and we plug it into our theaters and we have 30 plus instances of the symbol and it bogs down our file. And we are oh, only dear. focusing on a single room, but our file becomes extremely slow and weighed down. Um, you know what? There's a good solution for that. It's level of detail function. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this in Vectorworks. So symbols are amazing in that you have a 2D representation, which is exactly the graphic you want in plan. Then behind that, you can have a 3D model of the thing whatever it is projector or light or anything okay and in both the 2d and the 3d symbol um this only came in a couple of years ago you may not have used this but you can have three levels of detail low medium and high so if you were uh, if you were kind of you know designing you would want to switch to low level of detail and then really only turn the high level of detail on for the final renders and that would really give you a simple 2d and a simple 3d model to work with wouldn't be much speed penalty at all. Could even be quite blocky, um, almost like a proxy, yeah? And then when you go to do your final renders, you just switch on the high level of detail. You can do it through class, but it's a lot more fiddly. <laughs> so that's, that's a like, good solution. Oh, right. Is that built that. into like the symbol um, itself or like, or is that like a Vectorworks preference? Um, no, it, it's just when you create the symbol, uh, it, it might be something you've just not spotted in the latter versions of Vectorworks. So I think it came in in 2021 or, or 2020, just a level of detail function for 2D and 3D. I, I usually, when I make these symbols from these imports, they're, they're usually just the 3D. So I, don't, I yeah. don't typically make a 2D version of the symbol to be plugged in when we cut the sections and viewports and stuff like that. Yeah, the good thing is if you have the 2D, when you're looking in plan, you only see the 2D, so you're not seeing the 3D model geometry, so that speeds up. Um, and actually what you can even do, you can even put side views in, like 2D side views. So when you cut a section, instead of trying to calculate the hidden line of this complex 3D object, it just shows you the 2D view of what it should look like, which is pre-calculated. 
A lot of people don't know about this. Maybe use it, but it's a cool feature. Oh, that's nice. Well, that that yeah. actually might be like the biggest part of the problem. That's really yeah. nice. I'll see you, I'll put yeah. you on the list for next year, Lance. Give me a shout. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Okay, um, Mark, we're, we're going to have an option for more Q and A's at the end. At the end here. Um, so, Mark, if, if, um, we'll come back to your question shortly but i think this is an, a nice kind of segue into you know we just we just kind of highlighted here some of the problems that people are experiencing mm. with their inefficiency so cad libraries you know lots of people not using the 3d capabilities importing consultant information this often weighs down your drawings even in terms of layers and classes or 3d um, components as uh, adora and lance were just dis discussing a lack of well-organized office you know libraries cad libraries um this is all kind of making our vectorworks usage slightly you know encumbered if, if you like so yes. i think that leads us nicely into jonathan you know, what, what are some of the best practices for cad libraries and, and workflows like how can we be getting the most out of it and and maybe this is a we can have a look at some of your a little live demo i think coming up yeah. in a minute yeah definitely um okay so i think i'd say the big if we've made a list of top five um, ways to improve your Vectorworks, the first one, number one, would be probably just invest in training, whether that be self-learning training or, you know, some, some coaching. Um, and learning keyboard shortcuts, okay? Uh, one thing that I have done for many, many years is developed an enhanced workspace. So I load, the first thing I do when I get a fresh copy of Vectorworks is even before I start to use it, I go and create, recreate that workspace year, of, year after year. And what that has is a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that are logical, easy to learn, and super easy for me to teach. So that is number one, learn the keyboard shortcuts and learn more. And that's easy because everybody can do that, like playing the piano, you know, practice your chords. The second one would be to um, develop a template that is saving you time. Now, I'll, I'll show you my template. It could always do with more work, of course. I wish I'd had a, a bit more time to develop it. But it does the job and it saves a lot of time. When I start a project, I can go from zero to, I could say hero, but zero to somewhere in a few hours quite rapidly. So that's good. <clears throat> the third one is probably, um, well, the template involves the standards, I would say. So that's part of that package. The third one is the libraries. Okay, so 2D libraries or 3D libraries, whichever it is. We talked about libraries and having those accessible so you know exactly where they are. You can type in a word and it will search for them and you can find them in a second or two. Imagine that. If you could go and grab a symbol from anywhere very rapidly. So that's easy to achieve. <clears throat> now, the third biggest one, and it, in some ways I would say this could almost flip to number one in terms of the ultimate time save, but this is the harder one, is the movement from 2D to 3D and integrated um, drafting into integrated BIM modeling. And I call it BIM, and I don't mean collaborative BIM with loads of consultants necessarily, can be, but it can be single lonely BIM, just you guys in your office, working efficiently from a model to cut sections, cut plans, cut elevations. And we know this, that as soon as you then make a change on the drawing, well, it's not a drawing, you change, change, change the model, all of your drawings, you click a button, it's updated. So, you know, those are the things that people waste time on is coordination of drawings all the time. We all know it, but we still do it. So that is the single biggest thing, the movement to 3D and a BIM workflow that will ultimately improve your efficiency. But that is probably the biggest task, the biggest challenge out of all of them. And then I think the final one is step up your presentation. Um, and that's where Twin Motion comes in for rendering, virtual reality, panoramics, uh, twin motion cloud presenters that you can share with clients you know these days even a small practice can knock the socks off a client and not have to go out of house to get these things done so you know there's five i think i'd probably get, get another five if you wanted <laughs> i think that's enough great great well would you like would you like to show us uh, some of your templates? yeah let me let me share desperate to do a bit showing so let me let me share my screen. I've got a couple of projects here, guys. So I'm just going to move you guys over there. When I look over there, I'm just chatting to you. Here we go. <clears throat> Can you see that okay, everybody? Yep. Um, 
Okay, so I'll just start off briefly. I won't go into too much detail because there are a few things I want to talk about. Is, is a template. So when I go uh, Command N, you really ought to have a blank template. So my blank is called default, and that's just a completely blank file. And I would use that to shuttle uh, data from consultants into and never import into my design file because if there is a problem, its problem is it hits my design file. Bring it into a blank file, you know, work with it, see, see what kind of issues it has. And then you could copy and paste it into your design file or you would reference. Now referencing is better because it holds that consultant's data externally from my design file. So much cleaner, it doesn't bring through all the classes and it doesn't bring through the file size. So nice solution, that one. Then I go down to my, you see all the other vector it's templates. Here's my 2D template of which this is it. Okay, just, so just, just, just quickly, just interrupt. Yeah, sure. Who, who always cuts and pastes their information in? Who you, who references stuff? <laughs> the few of you, there you go. I didn't know yeah. that. I've, I've, you know, and that's you know something from like a micro microstation <clears throat> discipline was was really good with referencing. But yeah, yeah, I'm guilty of that of that cut and paste. I think the only time I copy and paste is when I need to get at the information and physically edit it. If, if I'm not right. physically editing, if I can edit in the other file, I'll reference and bring it in. Right. Okay, so here's my template. Um, so look, for me, the template doesn't consist of a, a blank file with a few layers or classes in. It consists of quite a bit, actually. So I'll just kind of run through. You can see, if I go to uh, layers, design, sorry, sheets to begin with, I've already got a bunch of preset sheets. Okay, so these are all pre-titled drawings for the kind of projects that I do, which are generally one-off houses and small planning applications. So I can pretty much anticipate I'll have a location plan, a block plan, a site plan, maybe existing plans, some elevations, proposed plans, and so on. And these are 10 drawings ready to rock and roll. So that's why I said within um, a couple of hours, I feel like I can knock out almost a set of drawings, you know, because I've already got the sheets ready sat there. Um, I have a few un unusual paper sizes as well that I rarely use, but if I do need them, they're there, there, just for when I need them. And eventually I might delete some of these if not needed. So that's the first thing, just have a bunch of sheets. If you can anticipate your projects, your deliverables for a client, why not have a sheet sat there ready with the title block on it, ready to rock and roll. Secondly, design layers. We can do the same thing with the design layers. So I've just got some pre-named design layers in here. You can see I've got proposed layers in a group. I've got existing layers and survey layers and so on as well. Now, mostly these will change and I may well change the name. And if they're gonna be 3D, I'll definitely edit characteristics about these. So you can only go so far with this, but I do like the fact I don't have to immediately start creating layer by layer every time for, for a project. I've got some standards that I can follow. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. The final element of my layers is what I call graphical resources. Okay, so I like to have these very accessible. They're not library kit, kit as such. I'll talk about libraries in a minute, but these are just sort of my graphic standards that I might try and use to be consistent within a template. There are a few little gadgets in there. Uh, you know, a few of the kind of furniture gadget, gadgets that come with Vectorworks. And I, I like to just show these because sometimes people are amazed and you know, don't even know that there's a, a sort of parametric tables and, and things like that you can play around with. So these are good for designing both in 2D and 3D, okay, because they're rapid and they're quick. Um, they're not highly detailed like BIM objects or bespoke things, but like, if I just want a shower for a client, I could just go in and type in, I want a, a 1500 shower. So, that, you know, these little gadgets really more than anything, but they save time. So I have a kind of couple of layers in there. I'll give you, and I have one for dims and notes and one a bit for detailing as well. Well, Hi, we'll, we'll, come, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come to some questions in, a, in a, just a second. Yeah, let's do, let's do questions in a moment. Okay, so that's the second element of your templates is some standard layers. Some of them were just nothing on them and may not get used, but some graphical standards loaded in. Uh, but keep it, keep it slim. You don't want a 100 megabyte file before you get started on a project. Now up to 10 megabytes is fine. And then I guess the final element is a meaningful set of classes. And this is probably the bit that I would say nearly every practice does slightly differently. There is no one size fits all. 
but it's it's a set of classes that you are comfortable with that make sense to you and it's making sure that they're at least semi-organized as a starting point may not end up like that but at least it starts like that and of course like everybody I will go and copy and paste things in from other projects and bring it in and that will bring through classes from other projects so sometimes you just got to do a bit of tidying up on this but it, that's it really it's just um sheets layers resources and classes so yeah do you guys have a similar thing yeah excellent not not yet no that's the one to develop that's it takes a bit of thought but sometimes you can develop it from some typical projects but it's a good it's a good thing okay shall i talk about libraries then shall i move on to libraries or do you have any questions specifically about templates guys so we had a, we had a, we had a few questions there we had mark america yeah. and then eric Go for mark, it. You, mark you had your hand up first or has your question been answered no no it hasn't been answered um we'll be forgotten um, it a question to do with hardware and if i'm if i take advantage of all the bells and bells and whistles the 3d capability effect works has and maybe twin motion motion the kind of minimum requirement in terms of yeah, mac or pc um <laughs> which way would you lead mac or pc i'm, I'm a mac user a Mac user. Oh, you know what? It's a really easy answer now. A couple of months ago, it was a very difficult answer. It's a MacBook M1 Pro with a big screen or two big screens plugged in and a keyboard plugged in. So you use it like a desktop, but you can bring it to the office like I have, you can pop home, you can travel with it. Ten, it's 10 core, so it's very, very potent and fast. You can see my cores uh, whirring away up here, my 10 cores. In fact, if I bring up this one, Activity Monitor, See, see my cores here, look, barely scratching a surface. Um, so yeah, that's good. Here's the GPU, here's the graphics processing here, not doing a lot. So yeah, they're very powerful. The only tricky decision there to make is do you want to stretch to the max chip and 32 gig of RAM? I didn't, I went for the base model um, and I've been very, very pleased with it so far. So I think- I have to invest in that to achieve what, what I want to achieve, could I do it with what I've got at the moment or something maybe upgraded? Um, let's not go into detailed specification questions, Mark. Drop me an email and I'll, I'll yeah. happily advise you offline because it's a bit more involved. But, you know, what I would say, my advice would be, guys, don't let hardware hold you back um, because your time as architects, your training and your experience is so much more valuable um, than um, the hardware. Oh, you know, the time wasted by having five-year-old hardware can be significant. You have to invest both in training, software, but you have to invest in the hardware as well. Um, and I think if you do that as a small business or even bigger one, you know, you, you know that you're working as efficiently as you can. But yeah, I think having bad hardware will potentially put you off any form of 3D workflow, which is clearly a shame, I'd say. Right. So yeah, you've got, you've got to go for it sometimes. And I say with the new MacBooks coming out now, um, it's a good time actually, particularly with the new M1 chips. Yeah. Great. Great. America. Thank you, Mark. Um, that my questions may be too specific for right now, but I was just a bit fascinated with what you did with that dining room table. <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what is that? And how, like, yeah. is I that, mean, that's it's very really straightforward. Need? These are objects. So if you go to this palette here, the furniture and fixtures palette you will have a whole bunch of little objects, including a table and chairs object. And these are parametric. So what this means is you can control the settings, the size, um, and fiddle around to your heart's content. So they're super good just for quick design. And you get a really nice, simple 3D, not a very detailed, but they're very fast. Can you see? So that's the beauty of those. So yeah, there's loads of good stuff on here, actually. Let me show you so a little file. Is that something that you made or it's something that you download from somewhere? No, no, this is totally Vectorworks based. It's just, you you may not have um, explored this little palette here yet. <laughs> so go and have a look, oh. explore the furniture palette. You, you have it, America. Okay. You have it there. <laughs> You've had it. You've always had it. Um, you know, look, I, I am constantly surprised when I'm de teaching people, um, I can show them tiny little things that give them a lot of joy. And actually it's just because they didn't know that this was there. Um, so yeah, that's quite common. <laughs> Um, let me show you another one though, similar note. So here's the resource manager. 
Okay, so Command R, it's one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts of all time. I might park this on my other screen, but let's leave it here for you today. So what you need to do, guys, if you haven't done, as well as exploring the pretty comprehensive libraries that Vectorworks ships with, you know, it really does ship with some amazing libraries of kit. But the problem with this kit, it isn't always what you need, is it? It's kind of a lot of stuff there. Yeah, it's nice, but I don't need it. So what you need to do is have a look through and see if there's anything good in there. But you need to go to favorites. Okay, so here's my favorite files. Okay, so what I've done is I've created some Vectorworks files and I've added these as favorites. Um, so I've got a couple of the Vectorworks ones in there. I don't mind this one. That's one that I go back to again and again. It's nice and simple. But more importantly, I've got my libraries, my JRA libraries here. So when I need something, um, you know, if I'm doing a project and I need a tree or something or some people, I can go right here, jump in. And these, these are the libraries that I, I sell on my website, as I say, that I've kind of put together for you guys. And the good thing is, you know, when you um, drag in something, so let's see if I can just do this on the design left, just get back to a design left there. You know, as soon as you drag something in, it will bring through uh, the correct class um, with it. So that will have brought through this class symbols vehicles. So I can immediately manage it properly. And it's all nice. It's got a nice, shall we say, uh, fill around it. Can you see? Sort of traced around. So I don't need to mask or do any funny business. It's all there for me. So yes, these libraries are, are pretty comprehensive. Um, not sure whether the latest uh, Teslas are in there quite yet. We'll have to get those in there. But things like libraries of your basic packs, people, trees, and cars. Who doesn't need those, yeah? We need those all the time. And then we get onto things like hatches, some big libraries of hatches, stone hatches, all sorts of things. And of course, all you do here, you know, just drag and drop those in, which is lovely. Here's a little tip for you guys, if you don't know this one, this wonderful tool, the attribute mapping tool, allows you to scale, do you know this one? And rotate your hatches. So if you don't know that one, it's a bit of a crowd pleaser. This is a very nice tool for hatching and working with all sorts of different styles of hatch. Those are my uh, construction hatch libraries. I've got a couple of those. Then I've got, um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll probably talk about the walls library in a minute. So where I was going with this was this kitchen stuff library. So let me open it. Let me open that file. So right click and open. Okay, just let it open. And you can see, here we go. I've got a load of pre-made kitchens that I can use for different projects. And these look great in 2D, but of course they're generated from the 3D models. So with a bit of adaption, I can bring these kitchens in and fiddle around and, and modify them as required. Um, so yeah, these are great. These are all available for you guys. These are all available in here. Base units, wall units, utility cabinets, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it's a fun palette to explore this one. Definitely the, the furnishings and furniture. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Love it. Yeah, Brilliant. it's nice. It's very quick to be able to sort of just show the client what the kitchen could look like, not, not designing it in detail for them, just to show them yeah. the layout and how the space works. That's enough, I'd say. But the beauty is that all of these are uh, objects, can you see? So what that means is that if I edit the style of this one, let me say I change that to surface mounted doors. Uh, let's go for glass, just so you can see. I click OK, and then every door, every unit that was that style in the model will change, which is really nice. So that's using style within a plugin object, and that's powerful. You change the style, and it changes everywhere. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Love it. I really, in, I've only put that file together fairly recently, Rion, and I've, I've already found it saved me like hours and hours. So a little bit of investment saves a lot of time. Awesome. <clears throat> um, Eric, the other thing, go on. Oh, Eric had a question. So mine's related more to the design layers. Um, so when you had the graphical resources up, yeah. Um, did you so are you using those graphical resources like the table um for an easy access to be able to copy them into your design model or are you mainly using your resource library to bring in the models like you're showing now 
Um, I do a bit of both, yeah. Um, if it's quicker, I'll just pop in here, I'll go in, and if I know what I'm looking for, I'll just drag and drop it straight in. Fine. Uh -huh. If if I need a bit more, I'm not quite sure, I'll do this. I'll open the file up, and I'll browse through, and I'll, I'll go over and say, yeah, actually, this kitchen could work. I'll copy it, mm -hmm. and then off I, off I go to my uh, project, and, and I'll paste it in, you know, and there it is. And now I can start working with it and adapting it. So... This is a good system for when you've got like loads of stuff coming in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the other system is quite nice when you've just got the odd one-off object as well. And the second part to that is, so I'm in the process of doing, so I in Revit, I have my standard sheets set up sure. with my standard details and all this other stuff so that yeah. it's it's always there in my template. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm starting to transfer those over, you know, it's... Uh, a wall type detail right so it's the same same thing um and i'm putting that into certain design layers um and then do i keep that as in my design template or design layer in my template so that it's always there is that no. the best, best place <laughs> to put that okay no, or don't, do I don't, it don't put it? too much in the template because as i said before i've been to a few practices where their template was 100 megabytes and they're like mm -hmm. why are all our projects so big why have you run out of disk storage space why is it all so slow to do a dropbox you know their file starts off 100 meg keep it below 10 yeah so what you need then guys is a good set of libraries for these so that here is my walls library okay so i go into my walls library here they are and if I really want to get a good peek at them, as I say, my alternative is I could drag and drop them to replace. Let's show you the two, two ways. So I don't know, here's, a, here's another little project uh, I was gonna show you a bit more sort of construction, but let's say I decide I'd like different wall type. I can literally just drag and drop it onto the wall and replace that wall if I wanted. I don't really wanna do that, but let's just go for it anyway. See what happens. Didn't really look a lot different, did it? But um, so that's one way to do it. But the other way to do it is right click and open that file. Okay. And as I say, I'm a big fan of doing this because these libraries have taken some time to create, but look how useful they are with all the different types of walls. And I'm always adding to these when I do a new project, if I need a different type of object or wall. Uh, so I created these for walls, slabs, and roofs. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say that I adapted them from, from Vectorworks libraries. But you can see they're nice and simple. They've got A for architect and cast stone or brick or panel or whatever. So what's really nice about that, guys, is look, if I click right click and edit this clay brick class, okay, here's the 2D graphics that are nice and consistent for my drawings. But for me, I can easily click into the texture. And let's say that I now want to swap this brick for a different type of brick, which of course I will. What I, that, what I now do is I'll go to my um, JRA texture packs. I've got a load of texture packs here as well. And in there are 120 different types of materials and loads of bricks. This is just one pack. I've got three of these. But I can basically just change the brick, swap it out, watch all those look. Can you see how quick that was? Because they're all classed up properly. So having done that hard work once, I now never need to worry about it again, and I can very easily change the look of my model. So it's a really, really worthwhile exercise. So yeah, having a look, if you're gonna use the wall tool, um, I would say developing a library of wall types is, is number one uh, resource that you can do. It's a good one. I've got the same for slabs. Here's my slabs and here's my roofs. Now, of course you can save yourself some time by going to my website and Snapping them up for Christmas, but and the good the good thing is you can then develop them yourself. <laughs> That'll be the ideal Christmas uh, stocking filler. I, I think Christmas present from Santa. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, we're, 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 yeah. we're we're fast coming up to the top of the hour here, and yeah. uh, we've got a couple of a couple of questions from America and then Paul, and then Hello, once actually. once once Jonathan answers those, then Jonathan, would you would you let us know how we can get in touch with you, where we can purchase these libraries and a little bit about your book of course love to how, how long have we got Rian? well i said we'd, we'd stop at the end of the end of the hour i'm happy if you're okay to go on for another 10 I'm, minutes or so jonathan is that all right? yeah i'm fine let's do 10 Hello. more minutes i just okay. want to i just want to show you one more project if i may um while i've got on screen so 
This is a typical workflow I would engage for, say, a one-off house. So what I've done here is I've created my three-dimensional model. You could call it a 3D model or a BIM model. And you can see it's very, very zippy, very responsive. And part of the reason for that is because it is just the model, okay, without too much other stuff in. Um, but there is a fair bit of detail in there, as you can see. And then what I do, guys, is I take this model and I do this, um, should we say, around my vector its origin, ungeographically referenced, so just around my zero, zero point. And then what I do, I will reference that into this file. So here is the building landed in the site. So keep your site on and your site models and your building models separate if you can. It's a bit like consultants information separated. But again, it's still pretty zippy. And the beauty of this is I've got two, two sets of drawings. Look, this drawing will create all of my lovely looking, should we say, building drawings for planning, my elevations, yeah. Um, so Mark, these are the kind of quality of the drawings that I'm getting from Vectorworks with just standard sort of rendering. You know, they look quite nice and 2D sort of graphical. Um, that's why I'm saying I don't worry too much about line weights and things like I could, but I've got shadow, I've got depth and all sorts going on in there. But I also get quite nice little renders out of the box as well. And then when I need to, I go to the site file and in the site file, this is where I, I start to do things like, you know, cut sections, sort of site sections. Does that make sense? So through with the context of the site. Um, and that's a, that's a good workflow, I think. You keep the site and the building separate. So I just wanted to show you that one. Okay, so that's a good little tip. Just separate the files, but don't separate too much. I'm not really a fan of like every file being separate and referenced together. That just slows you down too much. Right. Uh, I like to have all my model in one file so I can get at everything when I'm designing. So that's a good one. Right. Okay. Paul. Paul in America. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Ryan. I just want to say thank you, Reval and Dash. But um, we, we use 3D, um, as, you, as you know really well, I advocate switching and investing in that. We need some help with our templates, and we just keep getting really busy and um, not getting around to it. We book out time, and then we end up doing something else. So I think, Jonathan, we'll get in touch and, and book you in so we, we're committed to getting this done. And you, you, it would be great if you could help us with our with our templates and its and library because uh, it's going to really help. Definitely. Definitely, Paul. I look forward to carrying on that conversation whenever you're ready. Christmas, New Year, but absolutely. So we're going to head out. And thank you, Brian, for organising and to Nicole as well. So we'll see you all later. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Paul. You I'm coming to the real world now because I'm there coming to, to an end. No, bye-bye, Paul. Um, and so just coming... America had one question. Yeah, go for it. I guess I was just wondering about um, those wall libraries that you were just showing. Um, are they are they in fact sort of like comprehensive building assemblies? So that if you were to like, do they have all of the elements so that you could actually zoom in and mm. um, a detail drawing at you know say like a, yeah, a, one a one to two scale or something of that sort? Like is it is it are they actually comp like? Is all, are all the materials there, I guess, is what I'm asking. All, all the components are there for every material and the right thickness and the right specification. Um, I would call it one to 50 level or maybe one to 25 level, maybe not one to two. They don't have cavity ties and damp proof courses and stuff like that. But yeah, the components are there. Um, and each component can be separately classed with different materials and, and graphics. The other beauty of that is, is you can turn off that detail Okay, with a single button click, I'm not gonna show you which one today, you can turn off the detail. So you design in full detail. And then when you go, you know, do your concept planning drawings, you just turn the detail off, but you know confidently you're there in terms of the construction. And when you're ready, you can turn it back on again. So if you were to change, like you said, like do that quick shift where you sort of said you were gonna go from a brick facade to say metal cladding. Yeah. Um, all of those corners resolve themselves instantaneously and everything either lengthens or shortens to meet at the right place is that right no it's, it doesn't know about construction it doesn't know about detailing that to us no cut off for does revit doesn't none of it knows the detail but the component if you put a door or wall in of course it will it will drop into that opening and um you know you'll have those different materials so yeah it's, it's very rapid but what it does give you is detailed drawings if you want the detail but also you can black it out or gray it out 
if you don't want it. So it's very nice level of detail on the walls. Yeah, it's cool. Love it. So having those BIM libraries has been really, really helpful to me when I do projects. And uh, as I say, I keep developing those as, as I do new, new, new designs. Excellent. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. I suppose that the last, the last piece here is to, um, yeah, how, how do we get in, get in contact with you? What sorts of trainings do you offer? And yeah, tell us sure. a little bit about your book. Well, love, love to. Um, so let me share my screen again, just briefly. Let's talk about this. So first way, of course, um, we've got my website. So I've got a couple of websites. So these, this is my UK sort of Vectorworks salesy oriented site, but there's plenty of information about my training here. I've got a good sale on at the moment, as you can see. That's one of my projects from a few years ago. But yeah, I, I do all this kind of different types of training. So check this out. Um, and of course, you can, you know, watch a few of my videos on YouTube and so on. And just reach out to me with the, with the email here, info at jonathanreeves-cad.co.uk. So that's that one. <clears throat> now, this is the, more of the Vectorit side. Um, if you're more interested in the uh, rendering side and the, the twin motion side, then flip over to my real-time-rendering.com site. Uh, this is a fun site to explore. And this will tell you a lot about twin motion if you're not, if you're not sort of clued up on that. Um, and it's a very enjoyable site to look at but this is the, probably the bit I'm most excited about Rion is my book so um, if you click on the link here you can have a quick little look at my book I think there's a bunch of different sort of pages it's 322 pages it's quite a big book there's 20 chapters but what's really good about it is there's also nine case studies by inspirational artists and firms who all tell you what they've done and show you what they've done with Twin Motion. Um, so yeah, I'm really proud of this. It, it was probably a year in the making on and off. So a big, big project, you can imagine. But if you look at some of the, uh, the quality of some of the work in there, it was absolutely superb. In fact, let me just go on here. Here it is. So I'll just pop into full screen. Can you see that okay, guys? Yeah. So this is what Twin Motion can do. <clears throat> These kind of renderings are relatively easy to do from Twin Motion. I'm just flicking through a few of the pages to give you a bit of an idea. But yeah, we tried to make the book really nice to look at and beautifully laid out. So super excited about that. And as I say, we've got all these kind of featured artists and featured firms as well in there. There's different scales of work. There's master planning and small stuff and there's big stuff as well. Um, but yeah, all of that is actually Vectorworks, really. And then the next level, Twin Motion is the icing on the cake and the Vectorworks is the cake itself. Making the good cake is the key part, I would say. Make Brilliant. a good cake, but then enjoy icing it up with Twin Motion. And, and, and Twin Motion comes free with Vectorworks 2022. So yes, absolutely. It's, it's amazing software um, and you can get it for free if you're on 2022. So if you're in the UK, give me a shout. If you're not, um, approach your local Vectorwix resellers or Vectorwix themselves. But yeah, it's well worth it. Amazing. Jonathan, <laughs> that was superb. Thank you very, very much for that uh, whirlwind tour of, of Vectorwix <laughs> and it's what's possible and plenty of food for thought for everybody there. I've just, I've just realizing that, you know, so many of us are sitting on this, you know, this kind of asset of yes. Vectorworks and not unlocking it to its fullest potential because it's like and I love the idea of you know producing your images your even your kind of your your reports inside of Vectorworks you're not having to use another piece of software rather than jumping around I think that's ultimate efficiency so it it really is a wonderful bit of software I mean I, as you can tell I get quite excited and animated about it quite passionate about it um I've been using it more than 20 years and I absolutely love using it. It's the best part of my job. Now, I do lots of other things like Urion training and all sorts of other things, self outdoor and twin motion, all these things. Yeah. Probably the most fun bit of my job is getting onto a project and designing with Vectorworks in 3D. And sometimes within not, not a huge amount of time, you know, I, I step out of my, my, my room and my office and I, I've just really enjoyed what I'm doing. So yeah. I would say that's a huge factor in your choice of software. If you don't love the software, have a look around. You know, I love what I do in Vectorworks. 
And I feel really, enjoy, you know, privileged to be able to use it. I mean, it's not perfect. There's always things that could be better, uh, but yeah. overall it's fun to use. It's very powerful. And um, I think there's always more to learn, put it that way. I'm still learning and you guys, I'm sure there's a lot, lot more you can learn to make it more enjoyable. So Brilliant. I think that's a good, good note to inspire you. Hopefully keep going with that. Excellent. Wonderful stuff. And well, we put all your details in the chat box there. So you've got Jonathan's website, Jonathan's oh, email address and the link for the book as well. So feel free to reach out for Jonathan. If you've got any more specific questions, highly recommend those of you using vet to works that you book in some training because if you think about how much an hour <laughs> or two or a week's worth of training is going to save you over a year worth of production it's enormous. It's absolutely enormous. And this is the, the place where most of you are spending still a huge amount of time. And if not you, your team is spending a huge <clears throat> amount of their time. So being able to draw like monsters is <laughs> absolutely imperative. And me. have way more fun, Rion. That's, that's exactly. You, you can't put a price on enjoyment of your job. But um, if you can do it in two thirds of the time, then you're onto a winner, aren't you? Definitely. Great stuff. Well, thank you again, Jonathan. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm going to tinker around with Vectorworks later on. This yeah, evening. have fun. Play over Christmas. And, I'm, downlo um, I'm downloading some of your libraries. That's for oh, sure. Oh, great, great. Lo love to hear from you guys. And uh, it's been lovely to meet you all. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and New Year. Thank Brilliant. you, you too. Hey, is the info at, at Jonathan Reeves, is that the best email to reach you at? Yeah, have... either of those. The real the the, the vector it's one's a great one, uh, and the real time rendering if it's more twin motion orientated. Okay. Take care, yeah, guys. Definitely do. Thank you, sir. Lovely to see you all. Cheers. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, Rian. Thanks for hosting. And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment, and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.